Call the Herkimer County Legislature to order, and I'd like to ask our uh, President and Veteran, Raven Smith, to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In light of it being September 11th, um, remain standing for a moment of silence for all those who were lost on this day 12 years ago and for the thoughts of our veterans, both past and present. Clark is the last one, so she's going to try out this year, so <laughs> we'd we'll be lucky to have her. Well, welcome, ladies, and uh, Legislator Mano would like to give a proclamation out. Uh, <laughs> As you all know, the ACC uh, women's softball team the NCAA championship last year, and in honor of that, we're going to give them a proclamation tonight. The proclamation reads, whereas by winning the 2013 National Junior College Athletic Association Division III National Championship, the Herkimer County Community College women's softball team and its coaches have brought great credit to themselves, their college, their families, the county of Herkimer, and the state of New York. And whereas HCC women's <coughs> softball traveled to Minnesota to play in the 18 double elimination World Series as the number two seed, where they beat the number one seed, Brookdale Community College, with a score of five to two to win the championship. And whereas the Herkimer County Community College women's softball team finished the season with a record of four, 43 wins and two losses. Tina Karachi was named the tournament's most valuable player. And whereas this championship is a first for Coach P.J. Anadio's program, the softball coaching staff has been selected by the National Fast Pitch Coaches Association, NFCA, as this year's NFCA NJCAA Division III National Coaching Staff of the Year. Head Coach P.J. Anadio and the assistant coaches Dan Stalteri, Steve Spino, and Steven Sedora led the generals to the first ever national championship. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Vincent J. Bono, do deem it fitting and appropriate to 
proclaimed Thursday, September 12, 2013, as HCCC Women's Softball Team Day and HCCC General's Softball Coaches Day in Herkimer County and urged the residents of the county to join in the celebration. Dated September 11, 2013, given under my hand in the great seal of the County of Herkimer, New York, in the year of our Lord, 2013, signed Vincent J. Bowen, Chairman, Herkimer County Legislature.
Belansky, I believe, uh, and his subject matter is landlords. I don't. Hello, everyone. My name is Patrick Wilson. I am. I and my family have lived here in Brooklyn County for about 50 years. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I served at the U.S. Air Force, and I retired from Remington Arms after 39 years of service. Uh, I'm here as a concerned landlord, uh, even though I only have one unit in Mohawk with two apartments. And uh, in this flood of uh, 2013, uh, hit us uh, pretty bad, and uh, we had maybe you know seven to nine thousand dollars dollars of worth of damage to our property, and uh, it seems that Mr. Como and FEMA and the insurance companies and even maybe the less county legislators don't seem to want to do anything to help the landlords in this uh, in this process or even maybe guidance. And uh, several weeks ago, we read an article in the newspaper about Mr. John Brzezinski and. Back by Mrs. Uh, Ellen Rose and Hartman, and uh, we were kind of concerned, you know, about that. That was a very good article, and how maybe sometimes Remington Arms uh, seems to get lots of money, and, and some uh, there's a lot of talk, a lot of talk about the uh, about the jail, and a lot of money that's been uh, you know going around. And so, as we as landlords are a great asset to the community by providing housing and a place to live for people that. Uh, that live here and, and their families. And uh, we also, you know, put a lot of money back into the community, you know, by purchasing uh, items and, uh, for our properties and we pay utilities and of course, we pay our taxes. You know, local, county, state and federal. And uh, I know that some of our friends, uh, they're gonna be speaking our, the Jacob says, I only have one unit and, you know, they have like seven units and, uh, and they, they had tremendous uh, amount of damage to their, their property. And, uh, you know, the, the loss of income. And, uh, and so, uh, uh, so what are we supposed to do with all this time? How are we supposed to repair our properties? You know, we, you know we, even though we we're trying to make money from our properties, we still have expenses. And, uh, and some of the, the uh, Concerns basically is, is the damage of the uh, in the creek and how the creek is not being taken care of in the last past uh, you know past few years. Uh, I know we approached the uh, our town in regards to uh, some, many of the trees and, and the debris in the in the uh, in the creek. I live on Fulmer Creek Road, and uh, I suffered a lot of damage to my property. And my uh, my garage got moved, and a whole bunch of my driveway. I lost my car, and uh, you know so. And the direct result of that was because the uh, the town of German Flats didn't take proper care of the creek by removing you know the trees and debris out of there. We we tried for years trying to uh, contact Mr. Spato and ask him to uh, try to clear 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 the uh, debris, and you know nothing was ever done. And uh, and then when the 2013 flood came, that really had caused a lot of damage not only to our property and in Mohawk, and it was much more severe than uh, you know that everybody thought of, and so uh, um, that's what we're here for. We're trying to uh, you know trying to make people aware of what's going on in the county and see if we can get some help and try to uh, uh, you know uh, help us with this with this uh, landlord issue and. Uh, I know uh, that Oneida County is going to put some money back in the cricks and uh, who's going to take care of our cricks, uh, even though the state and FEMA has put the cricks back where they, they were originally, there's still going to have to be some upkeep on the, on the, on the cricks. And so uh, I know there's a lot of properties in the, in even the village of Mohawk that uh, that's going to hurt even Herkimer County because many of the people that I've talked to and uh, Got some checks from the state because uh, Mr. Coleman made a big deal out of it by coming to the area and you know giving 538 checks and he made a big political uh, uh, big issue of that. But he not doesn't realize that a lot of the people that even in Mohawk, uh, there's some friends of ours that are, you know they're they can't go back to their homes. Their homes been condemned and, and who's going to help them with that part? So there's a lot of uh, there's been a lot of 
a lot of uh, sad things going on in, you know, in, the, in the people that are hard working, some young couples, you know, they work hard and, uh, and they're not able to live back in their homes, you know, and that's, that's kind, of, kind of sad. Uh, so uh, that's basically what we try to do is try to make people aware that, you know, that maybe you can help us and guide us through this uh, process. Call up Virginia Jacobs. Hi, my name is Virginia Jacobs. I'm the co owner of Creekside Mobile Home Park in Mohawk. What Pat was just talking about. Um, I'd like to thank those of you who have looked into this for us, landlords. Um, I'd also like to address, um, Mr. Bowie, your suggestion. The t on the TV and in the newspapers that landlords, we've been told we're a small business, yet we're a landlord. Um, we should apply for low interest loans at 1.8% 1 per, 1 interest from the Small Business Administration. Um, why should we have to borrow the money when our neighbors are receiving grant money for the same kinds of damages? Where's the equality? We are paying the same taxes, utilities, and so forth. Um, also, I think people should know the criteria for uh, getting a low interest loan through the Small Business um, Association Administration. Um, if you pay your bills, have a high credit score, you qualify for a 6% interest. So that's what we were told that uh, for a business, we are a small business to them, and we qualify for a 6% interest. But we are a small business when it comes to um, getting help from the state. Um, all of our families have been displaced from this small mobile home park. We've lost all our income. How on earth could we possibly pay a 6% interest loan to get it back going? Um, we're just, I guess, our small seven unit mobile home park is permitted by the town, the state, and the New York State Department of Health, as well as we pay income tax on the rents we receive, yet we don't qualify for any grant money. It is evident that we are a small business, but don't qualify for grant assistance as other small businesses do. We are asking that our legislatures and officials at the town, county, state, and federal level work to assist the landlords who make up a large percentage of our taxpaying population and add a great deal to our local and state economy. Where is the fairness in distinguishing which small business should get funds and which ones should not? Our federal and state governments are not offering us any assistance. So we are looking for some help from our county. Maybe to even contact our state and federal representatives to get an answer. That's what we talked about earlier, which I appreciate. Um, the one question I do have is what is the reason that we must follow FEMA guidelines when our federal government has denied us that assistance? Why is the state determined that we have to follow FEMA guidelines and the state or the federal government FEMA says the landlords aren't covered? I guess I just have those questions and we can get some answers for that too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we call Barbara Weirs. So excited, you know, she said, you know, it's a sealed deal now. We couldn't afford <coughs> anyone else. 
But on June 28th, this horrible flood came, and the back wall caved in. Caitlin was in the cellar at the time trying to get things out. So it was so traumatic, we almost lost Caitlin. I mean, she came out, they opened the front door, and she actually came out of the front door with the bricks behind her. Um, we were very blessed at the time that Frank's construction happened to be in the area, and I said to Tom, call somebody quick, you know, we need somebody here. So they came in, and they waited in after I had run down to get the fire trucks to come, screaming, please don't let my house collapse, don't let my house collapse. And the firemen came in and said, don't go in the house, but Franks went in and waited in to water up here, and they saved the house. And we had to pay $31,000 out of our savings to save the house. So and then I thought everything was going to be all right. You know, we're going to be safe. You know, someone, you know, all our neighbors are getting the money, but we're not getting the money. And I hope to retire soon. And, you know, that was money in our savings. And I bet anyone here would miss $31,000 or so. So um, we don't know where to turn. We pay taxes. We've always done the right thing all our lives. And we just don't know where to turn on this. And it's just not fair. I don't believe it's fair. Everyone I talk to um, and I come across, I tell the story to them, and they said, oh my gosh, that is so unfair. That is so unfair. You go, girl. You go, girl. So I'm going. But I don't know where I'm going. But, you know, but thank you for anything that you can help us with or, you know, guide us in the right direction. Because, um, you know, I just think that this could even be, you know, if someone steps up to the plate, it could be a political home run for somebody. And, you know, I think it would be a real heroic effort for anybody to, you know, we would think it was a heroic effort anyway, of anyone, because um, it would help out a lot of people. Thank you. And we call Thomas Wires. Thank you. How can I call all this? Um, I want to thank the county for looking into this. I was unaware that you guys were planning to have this meeting uh, about the land and submit a letter to the governor. I think that's great. Uh, truthfully, um, we never planned to be a landlord, and, uh, and I just can't understand if there are flaws in the system with FEMA or the state uh, not helping the landlords out. And to me, um, the difference with that would be like if, if our house was on fire and then our neighbor's house was on fire, is they put the fire out of their house but not ours because we're landlords? You know, it just doesn't make sense. But I do want to commend all the landlords that I know because I'm a private investigator and process server and I'm in touch with a lot of uh, landlords through the county. And I've gotten quite a few calls from them um, and I commend them for um, trying to get their houses, their apartment houses back in order. I know one landlord is out eight furnaces and eight water tanks, and he's uh, you know doing due diligence to uh, get uh, the apartments back together and uh, get his uh, tenants back in, in, into the premises. There's still a lot of displaced tenants out there, and uh, you know it's been going on the third month now, and. Uh, so there's a lot of flaws for this uh, flood disaster program in the state. And not only not accepting uh, landlords, uh, you know, where I see it too is that there's people that are telling me that uh, they asked the state for $5,000 and the state sends them a check for eleven. So they would call me and ask me, Tom, how do, how do I justify the other $6,000? And I said, well, I don't know. And, you know, and, you know, our tenants got 6300 and which is fine, but there was nothing on the list that the state said you need to have on there to, to obtain that money. And so I'm just, it's all really confusing how this is working out, how the state's handling this. And I hope maybe you can even ask the state how to correct that, you know, if you can't get a resolution to uh, get the grant money through the county. But uh, there's a lot of flaws in the system here, and I think that, you know the county should help us uh, look into it. Thanks. We, we are cognizant of your, your request, and, and when I had that letter, uh, I know we were out here earlier. I, I will take that into consideration. Those those requests that you made, 
put those in the plan. Thank you. Uh, last uh, speaker is Dr. Anne Marie Murray. Discussion of promotion on. Labor Council. From the Labor Council. 
Okay, from the Labor Council. Um, as far as the appointment, I um, have no personal problems with Mr. Brown. Um, as I mentioned in the last meeting, if uh, Mr. Brown's a political director of the union or whatever, the play of it is. And, um, yesterday, a press release came out with his endorsement. I think uh, in the public's eyes, perception problem there that uh, we're being asked to vote when many, many in this board have received this, the endorsement of uh, the appointee union. Um, I know it's a non-compensating uh, position, however, there are benefits to being a position like that. i sure that's your resume. I would, I think it um, would be more prudent if we uh, nominated somebody that is less involved in the contest. And then this, this gentleman obviously is, uh, as many of us did receive that in your lodge, but many of those that are in the front of the not improper, it could give people that perception. Anyone else? Um, yeah, in regard to the workforce board, uh, there are two representatives of organized labor on the local board, and this is one of the positions that will be, be filled. And we have a letter from uh, Alice Sabina, the executive director of the Workforce Investment Board. I believe it's with, an, with your mail part. Uh, and, uh, it goes through the process as far as him being recommended and uh, placing a person that was there previously. And uh, I, I just feel that with his, with their back, and I think we're in the selection that's valid. Anyone else? Sir? I, I just was curious. This is a new appointment, right? This is a vacant seat? Yes. Well, uh, and it's a new appointment. Because I was kind of surprised when I looked on the uh, Workforce Investment Board website and um, Mr. Brown's al already listed as a member. I'm not sure how that came about, but it seems odd that we haven't voted on it and he's listed on the website. I can show him what it's like a thing. We can check with Alice to see how why they did that here. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I'd like to call for roll call vote. Quick call for roll call. Yeah. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. No. Schrader. Yes. Ladine. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Rosinski. No. Mano. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Ackerman. Yes. Netlinski. Yes. Course. Yes. Russell. Yes. Resolution passed. Pursuant to Rule 6, number 8, the uh, reports of standing committees. I'll ask any committee chairman if they'd like to uh, give a progress of what their committee has done recently. Anyone? Any chair? Mr. Shaw. You know, I did attend the, the board of water meeting yesterday, and due to the flooding, you know, that we've had, the water has assisted 38 residents in 12 different towns. We've also uh, been called in to, to help assist in the study for culverts to, to measure sizes and the amount of water flow. So they've been kind of busy since the disaster came. Just kind of an update. Any other chair? All right, we'll now continue on with the consent agenda. We'll quickly read the resolutions uh, on the consent agenda. 199 is public safety emergency management with a month to report the sheriff. 200 is human resources authorizing practical experience for a community college, community college students at our public health nursing service. 201 is human resources raising means authorizing memorandum of understanding between social services and officer agent for home energy assistance program. And 202 is amending number 141 resolution, which authorizes the contract with the state and reimbursement for rabies program. We have a motion on the consent agenda. Mr. Wakefield, second by Mr. Adam. Any discussion? Debate? Sure. I, I just want to uh, commend Mrs. Kane and the college for initiating this program. It's a very good 
All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Resolution passed 10 to 10. Public Safety Emergency Management Application to the State Office of Homeland Security for a grant. This resolution authorizes an application for funding for the State Office of Homeland and Emergency Services under the Interoperable Communications Grant. I have a motion. Mr. Kuklinski, seconded by Mr. Shaw. Any debate? All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. Resolution passed, number 211. Information Services raising need for the contract and provision of document management. This resolution authorizes a contract with Beals Document Management for the provision of software and related services for the Information Services Department. May I have a motion? Mr. Ackerman, second by Mr. Russell. Any debate? Mr. Hartman. Um, did we send this out to bid? <coughs> Mr. Ackerman, did we send this out to bid? Yeah, yeah, we looked at five different companies. I believe it was five, four or five. Any other debate? All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed, name? Resolution passes 212. Please the means public safety and then the budget passes crime victim services. Plan. This resolution amends the 2013 budget in connection with the receipt of a crime victim service plan. May I have a motion? Mr. Russell, second by Mr. Hyde. Any debate? All in favor? Any opposed? <laughs> 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 Resources, this resolution sets a public hearing for the eight year review of Agriculture District Number One from Wednesday, October 2nd, 2013, at 1 45 p.m. We have a motion, Mr. Hyatt, second by Mr. Shaw. Any debate? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution passes. Thank you. Thank you. This resolution approves an extension of an imposition one one quarter sales tax through November 30th, 2015. I have a motion. Mr. Kopunski, second by Mr. Hyde. Any debate? Mr. Hart. Does this include the one percent that used to be shared with the municipalities? Yes. Mr. Russell, I'll answer it. Yes, it does. Um, can Mr. Copper propose an amendment at this time? I propose an amendment that the um, one percent reverts back to the formula when the um, municipalities receive that share. Um, we all know the flood, flood damage and mitigation that the municipalities had to take care of. We know that they're under a great deal of fiscal stress. Um, and we also know that they provide the majority of the services to the businesses that generate this sales tax that results in a windfall for the town. And we have a significant surplus sitting around. I, um, I believe this would be better if the scene in the uh, Second to the amendment. Mr. Hyde, second by Mr. Russell. Any more debate on the original? Mr. Uh, you might understand that this extending the tax rate to occupancy of hotel rooms, is that a bed tax? <laughs> That we're talking about? It's not, I think we should talk about it. No, it's not. It's not germane to this one. Well, it's in the resolution. Power it says occupancy of hotel rooms. Yes, they do. People do have to pay taxes once they, sales tax, once they uh, occupy a room. The same as when they eat a meal. The same as when they buy a gift. Yeah. The same true. as when they buy a gas. Yeah. Continue. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay, roll call. Mr. Hyde. Yes. Yeah. Kuczynski. Yes. Vano. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Ackerman. Yes. Kaplinski. Yes. Course. Yes. <laughs> Russell. Yes. Yeah. Shaw. Russell. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. No. Schrader. Yes. Manine. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Resolution. Uh, 
Ways and means authorizing contributions to events and assessment challenge. This resolution authorizes contributions to the cost of litigation incurred by the town of Frankfurt for the defense of an assessment challenge for three parcels. May I have a motion? Mr. Wheaton. Second. So such presents. Any debate? All in favor, aye. Aye, sir. Mr. Brzezinski. Yes. Mano. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Ackerman. Yes. McClinsky. Yes. Course. Yes. Russell. Yes. Shaw. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. Yes. Schrader. Yes. Yes. Denise. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hi. Yes. 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 Yes.
we be importing all the food we eat, all the clothes we wear, everything else. Not always getting any cheaper. So people got to make up their mind what they want. The design, education costs money. If it's going to cost 3500 bucks to find out where the DOC is going to accept this, that's part of the building cost. I don't know any other way to put it. It's only going to cost $3,500 if the SCSC um, approves the design. Just want to make that point. Yep. Anyone else? All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? No. 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 Resolution passes. Now go to comments by legislators. Any legislator who wishes to make a comment at this time? Mr. Smith. <laughs> There's another resolution. I stand here tonight and listen to the people that have um, endured the uh, perils of flooding. And probably of all the legislators in here, I'm probably the most qualified person on flooding in the years that I've lived in my home. I had a flood in 1984 very devastating flood in 1986. I personally had flood insurance. Uh, I had damage that, that amounted to many thousands of dollars. Uh, my home was practically destroyed. It was just teetering on a little bit of the foundation that was left. It was ready to cave in. I almost lost my life and my daughter's life in the cellar just before the wall came in. We just got to the top of the cellar stairs when the whole thing came in. We could have easily been killed there. Uh, what my point is, you can't come to a body like this and beg for money. You. What you need to do is pull up your bootstraps and get in the mud and the muck and work for yourself. Do what you can. We in Dowsville, we formed a neighborhood committee and we met with anybody that would listen to us and decided that we weren't going to have any more floods. We were going to do something to stop this flooding. And along with the Army Corps of Engineers, soil and water, and different agencies, we managed to build a control dam on the creek that was giving us the damage. So my point is, you can do all the talking you want, coming to people and asking the governor or asking any of the county for money. The real way to solve your problem just get together and work together and do it yourself. Uh, there's no, as the world, everybody knows, there's no free lunch. If you want something, you've got to do it yourself. And that's my uh, advice to these people. Somebody else? Okay, um, I just want to point out that throughout history, when there's a natural disaster, government stepped up to help and that's part of what we are built on. There are individual, um, there are some things that are beyond, beyond individual control or capability. Um, the money has been given by government from upstate New York down to Louisiana and people aren't begging for money. They pay taxes their whole life and um, they see their neighbors getting help, deserve it help, and um, I, I commend them for um, at least you know letting us know what they are going through. And as far as pull up your bootstraps and get money, I spend every night, every week night, and every Saturday and Sunday for about three or four weeks, walking around the neighborhoods in Herkimer, Mohawk. I can tell you, there are a lot of people full of mud and pulling up their bootstraps and going and helping neighbors out and uh, pulling together. People did. 
said, stand up for themselves. But some things, throughout history, government has to step in and help. And I think, uh, I, I'm sure these people that came here were some of those that were full of mud and worked their tail off, emptied their cellars, and then went back and helped their neighbors. I disagree with Mr. Hart. <coughs> I received absolutely no money from the government. Nobody gave us anything. What we accomplished, we accomplished on our own. There was no money from the Let's 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 go off that because we're, we're getting off this is for the good of the organization here and we're getting into debate. So this may I'd like just to um, remind everybody that tomorrow Catholic Charities of Herkorn County is hosting their annual Window of Hope Award um, and we are honoring the survivors and the um, first responders and the families of the victims. Um, if anybody would like a lunch ticket or buy a raffle ticket, um, they can see me after the meeting. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to remind anybody that uh, farm trip is going on at the Farm Road Dairy Farm uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, I, I do want to commend on behalf of the towns that the state did step in and help with culvert repairs, uh, all kinds of different The state doesn't have a printing press for everybody. You can't solve everybody's problems in a disaster. And I feel sorry for the people just like everyone. But I, I don't know any other way but to look at a low cost loan system. That's what they always tell farmers when they're in a disaster. Refinance the system and you got to start over. On a, on a lighter note, it's August 24th, Raycliffe Farm up in the town of Mannheim, they have family fun on the farm. This is an annual event, uh, it's a free event, it's there to sort of familiarize, familiarize people with agriculture and farming. And a part of this event every year, we have a couple of contests. Uh, one of the contests is a cow milking contest, we have several entries, and the winners of the cow milking contest were Rebecca Jenkins from Norway, our Herkimer County Dairy Princess, which I guess is pretty appropriate, and also Christina Kane, our newly appointed head of the Herkimer County Health Department. They tied for the championship. Uh, then our, our other contest is our milkshake uh, making contest. Do you have the bolts available? <laughs> <laughs> and our winners this year Samantha Ackerman, a 10th grader from Little Falls, and her dad, uh, Kurt Ackerman, our legislator over here, they soundly defeated our county administrator. His wife, <laughs> 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 that was a big one, yes. <laughs> if you ever want to have a good time, it's an annual event. They do it every year, and you can have more fun up there. It's just what was the winning? Was what the was the winning, winning flavor? Oh my God. Chocolate, 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 oh, chocolate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be the worst fellow. Yes. Stuart, do you want to fish? <laughs> 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 Anyone else? All right, folks, welcome. Mr. Madison? Okay, I'm going to be adjourned to Wednesday, October 1st at 2 p.m. That's our next quarterly meeting. It will be a public hearing on the eight year review of it, Virtual District Number 1 to 145. Motion second. Right. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye